What's up guys, it's Track, and we've got some brand new products. So do you guys remember Game Face? So a while ago, Game Face was effectively a Jet Blasters reskin of the CETA in the form of the Game Face Prime. Now it was less expensive, it was being marketed and supported domestically, which was really cool, and it was hitting a unique segment of the retail market by virtue of kind of bringing uh, at least uh, what we would consider to be high FPS play to like Tractor Supply and Bass Pro Shop and, you know, kind of attacking a demographic that we don't necessarily see at like your traditional toy retail. And so in that way, I thought that it was pretty cool. And then they disappeared. And I always kind of suspected that that had something to do with the heat death of jet blasters leading to them kind of fading away. But now they're back and they're back and they're coming to End War and they want to debut new product and they want to showcase some features and they've got merch and I just got a huge care package. So they sent all of this over. I'm really excited to take a look at it because it looks very featureful. It looks very thought out. It's definitely significantly more than just a CETA reskin or reshelling or retooling. Now, for those of you that are as enthusiastic about the performance market as I am, it's another pump action springer. And for the haters, I guess it's just another pump action springer. So a while back, there was this leak of kind of a catalog offering of things that Game Face was working on. And this is the first one to kind of come to light. So they're calling this the Tryon, specifically the Tryon Competition Blastered, engineered for all out action, customized for competition. That's a lot of alliteration. Crush in all levels of blaster events with three easy swap speed settings. Stock up to 130, super stock up to 160, and then ultra stock up to 200, which tells me somebody over at Game Face is, uh, is definitely hobby tuned in. Those are definitely hobby nomenclature words. So either they're consuming a ton of our content or their internship program is picking up the right guys. Over here, we can open this up and take a look. You've got this tagline inside that says the dart of war. That's pretty cool. You've almost got like a kind of like sports play style setup thing going on here. It says cut, put it on your wall and get in the game. So I guess this is designed to be a poster or a target of some sort, which I like. I like seeing multi-use, multi-material packaging. The uh, Tryon is gonna come in two colors. This one is what they're calling Thunderbird Blue. It's almost like a Tiffany blue. Tiffany is uh, is really hot in horology right now. I think that it's a little, uh, a little pastel uh, for my taste, but luckily it also comes correct in a red, uh, just a, a heated version. So we're gonna be taking this one out of the package. We're gonna start there. I guess I also just really quickly wanna thank them for sending over some t-shirts. We've got a Psychopath t-shirt, something called the Bulldog t-shirt, and then this one's called the Analyst t-shirt in red. So this is probably the one that I'm gonna flex on. Then a couple of ball caps. These are like trucker caps with the mesh backs and the Game Face logo very clearly embroidered on there. I think that this is a really handsome logo. I like that it's a G and an F and it looks like a face. It's a classic example of a uh, show don't tell. So let's take this out of the package. Let's see what we're working with inside. So before I do away with this packaging, I wanna point out that they're talking about how this is genuine m -lock. I assume that they have the licensing for it, both because they did on the Game Face Prime and uh, they're advertising it. You've got chevrons all over the packaging as well as all over the blaster. That seems to be a big part of the design language. You have this foregrip, which they say will be easily swap outable. It looks like down here in the blown up picture, there's pick rail underneath the foregrip as well as the uh, the actual grip back here, which is very interesting with its integrated handguard into its stock and then the stock itself being adjustable is fascinating. However, down here, it looks like this might be a standard AR hookup for a grip attachment here. Other than that, it looks like you've got the standard suite of featureful add-ons. Uh, you've got a standard mag release. It says that it's a quick release. You've got the, uh, the included sights, which are iron sights or plastic sights in this case. You've got a full top rail on the top that's flat. This is fascinating. Over here it says adjustable power levels 130, 160, 200 with included spring spacers. No tools needed. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the blaster itself immediately. First thing you notice is that the blaster is very lightweight and incredibly thin. Like as a lifelong ectomorph, I appreciate it when things are as thin as they possibly can be. I mean that is a very smooth, very thin profile. Maybe three barrel lengths uh, or barrel widths wide, and it maintains that all throughout the back. It gives me a lot of interesting questions about the plunger system and how that's going to work explicitly. Over here, we've got this tab, rolls down and this slides off. 
you can see in the back here, this is our quick change system that's going to allow for these, uh, these spacer swaps. It looks like you push it in, click out. It's got a guide. It's got a spring. And then I have the spacers here uh, in this bag that I could use for toolless swapping. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's click that into place, and then we'll slide this back on. Looks like there's really one, two, three points of articulation there. We're gonna leave it at the longest just because I tend to be pretty tall. One interesting thing is that this is not a multi-magwell. It is a multi-magwell, it's just a multi-magwell in that it'll take katanas, it'll take uh, talent magazines, and it'll take this new generation of Game Face magazine, which is in and of itself very fascinating. It's got a textured deco on both sides. It's half transparent, almost an homage to the old, uh, the old magazines. It's one directional. Uh, it's not multi-directional. It's got a, an arrow indicating that as well. I don't know if this is uh, more, it seems like it's more talent geometry than it would be anything else. However, uh, this would take both. What it won't take is full length darts. And I actually really like that. Then inside, it looks like this is shipping with a skinny pusher by default. It's flat on the sides, which means, theoretically, yep, click in, click out, click in, click out, pretty solid. And then I guess all that's left to discuss is that the uh, the sights are maybe the, the weakest part of the product. However, they're low profile, which I like a lot. They're not taking up a ton of space here. And then the grip is actually nice. It's, a, it's an AFG, it's kind of a, uh, it's a little small, might be my only take, but, uh, it's modular, you could replace it. One finger goes here, this goes here. I wish this was a little bit larger. The prime is actually very smooth. Uh, almost suspiciously smooth. Makes me want to get inside and take... Oh. All right, well, and the trigger pull, if you guys can tell from this, uh, the noise there, is a very short throw, almost a uh, button, like a click. It seems to be rotating instead of a slide where it would engage with... I'm excited to see the internals of this because it seems like there's a there's more than meets the eye. And then this is a, is not a scar. It's just the uh, the chevron kind of details again, capturing this muzzle device where you can see it's got a chamfered metal barrel all the way through there, and it looks like this literally just twists and clicks into place. And it's a uh, it's only got one one threading to do that. Seems pretty easy in that regard. As far as the blaster itself goes, it's just very comfortable. I like how thin it is. The, uh, the overall lightweight thinness of it, the crisp trigger pull. It feels like there's, here, wait. This thing is tight. This thing is cool. All right, let's take it outside. Let's put it over the chronograph. Let's see what it's got. All right, guys, so we're outside with the Trion. We're gonna start with their darts, put a few over the crony here. So. Uh, this is, I'm assuming, the 130 setting. And the 130 setting is getting 145. 160, 143, 144. Pretty solid. I also want to point out the chevrons are on the darts. It's just a, it's very consistent design language there. All right, so I want to test it really quick. That's obviously pretty solid performance in terms of your, uh, your proverbial super stock, so to speak. But I know my buddy Luke sells these spacers over on outofdarts.com for a lot of products, including like the Nexus and what have you. I'm curious to see what a genuine spacer, not that there's any real difference, uh, does for performance. So the Prime is still pretty smooth, although definitely, oh, well, okay then. That's pretty consistently dialed in right at under 200. Now, just for, uh, Curiosity's sake, I sell a spring. So this is their spring. And then we sell what we call the big black spring over at uh, FPS here. I'm curious what that does for performance in here. It might not be long enough. Yeah, I think it's uh, shorter. So let's try their spacer, my spring, just for giggles. We're venturing into, into mod guide territory here, lads. But uh, let's see if this works. Uh, you know, just a very different feel to the Prime there. I don't think that that's necessary, so to speak, but it's kind of interesting that that is an option. A much softer Prime with the old uh, BBS. So let's take their spacer, their spring, 
So if nothing else, this is a good showcasing for this modular spring swap. The toolless nature of this is quite nice and it looks like these notches would handle pretty large amounts of stress. So let's throw the stock back on, actually click it on. Very cool. I think we have three of their darts left. Let's put some of those down range, but at this uh, 200 FPS kind of level, we should be getting, you know, competition grade shots out of something this thin, this compact. Interesting. So uh, not bad, very clicky, very responsive. I've got some old game face mags here, which look a lot like katana mags. Let's go ahead and uh, see. So luckily those chamber, I've loaded them up with the, uh, the target darts specifically because I have a bunch of target darts. Let's see if we can get some of those on target. And so the, uh, the multi-mag will work. You could actually almost see in there that it has a, uh, a dual stage kind of mag release. I mean, overall, this is a, a pretty, pretty spicy primary. Now, I don't have a price range for it. Call this kind of a sneak preview. I know that this is a, uh, a production sample, not necessarily a, uh, a production model, but if you have more questions about this, if you wanna know more about the price, if you wanna know more about the internals, the internals I'll feature in a modification and kind of teardown guide here on my channel pretty soon because I'm very excited to see what's going on with this trigger pull. As for the blaster itself, you can check them out at Endwar. This company is going to be at FoamCon. They're actually relatively close to the FoamCon location this year. They've been talking with the director of FoamCon and apparently uh, they may or may not even have like some sort of custom slushy thing going on. So definitely well worth a visit. I hope to see you guys at Endwar and FoamCon this year. It's gonna be July 15th for FoamCon, I believe, and uh, full information in the description box below for the event where you could check this blaster out in person, as well as uh, for this company, I'll link to their landing page as well. I don't know anything about the distribution of this product necessarily or the pricing just yet. I imagine that we'll be expecting something around the $100 mark. Anything less than that, I think would be a pretty solid deal for as many features as are packed into this. And you have to keep in mind that this entire shell is injection molded. And I'm pretty sure that when we do the teardown, we'll find that this whole setup is in and of itself pretty modular. But uh, more than anything, I think my favorite stock feature has got to be the slam fire. It's been a, a long time and it definitely, it uh, tickles my alpha trooper muscle memory. So thank you guys very much for watching. Speaking of, I bet that I could, anyway, that'll be, uh, we'll save some stuff for the mod guide, but I appreciate you guys checking it out. Thank you for watching. As always, much love, blast on, drag out. Ah!